वेलकम बैक टू द रियलिटी डिबेट 100 स्मार्ट सिटीज अर्बन रिन्यूअल ऑफ 500 सिटीज एंड 2 करोड़ अफोर्डेबल हाउसेस फॉर द अर्बन पुअर थ्री मेगा स्कीम्स एज पार्ट ऑफ प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदीज मिशन ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन कलेक्टिवली सम 4 लाख करोड़ विल बी स्पेंड ओवर द नेक्स्ट 6 इयर्स now urbanization in india has largely been reactionary in nature we have very few examples of planned cities and even those are crumbling today under the demands of population explosion the center for the first time has acknowledged this urban planning mistake let's listen in to the prime minister jo private property developer hai unko to pata hota hai ki shehar itna badhega is disha mein badhega fir wo wahan zameen le lega yojanaye dal dega मकान तो खड़े कर देगा लेकिन जिंदगी जीने योग्य व्यवस्थाएं पहुंचती नहीं है न रोड बनता है न बिजली पहुंचती है न ड्रेनेज की व्यवस्था होती है और लोग आते हैं पैसे देकर के मकान भी लेते हैं बाकी व्यवस्थाएं होती नहीं क्यों क्योंकि शहर के नेतृत्व ने शहर नहीं बनाया कुछ प्रॉपर्टी डीलर ने शहर को बढ़ाया है ये जो मिसमैच है उस मिसमैच को बदलना है शैलेश पाठक द प्राइम मिनिस्टर मेड अ वेरी पॉइंट स्टेटमेंट देयर अ मिसमैच बिटवीन द पेस एट विच रियल एस्टेट प्रोजेक्ट्स कम अप एंड हाउ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर प्रोजेक्ट्स आर ऑलवेज ट्रेलिंग एंड देर ह्यूज टाइम गैप बिटवीन द टू एनी माइक्रो मार्केट दैट यू विजिट टूडे बी एट फरीदाबाद ग्रेटर नोएडा एक्सटेंशन एनी ऑफ दीज अपार्टमेंट टावर स्टैंडिंग नो सूवरेज नो नो वाटर सप्लाई इज द अमृत मिशन गोइंग टू रिजॉल्व दिस मिसमैच so i'd like to make three points here one is what the prime minister was saying was cities cannot be builder led they have to be city owner led and who owns the indian city today is actually a a a, a good question because according to me the way cities internationally manage themselves indian cities do not indian cities are managed by their state capitals but let's uh, put it aside right now uh coming to specifically the amrut mission you know the the focus of of the amrut mission is largely on a tap in every household and a sewerage connection in every household so we are talking about full service delivery in the next 5 years only after this has been achieved will we move into uh, storm water drains pedestrian non motorized and public transport and of course public spaces especially recreational parks for children so this is a very focused program it will not fund flyovers it will not fund all all the the usual extravagances that we are used to seeing so we are talking about quality of life for the average citizen and remember this is a pro poor program i would say the the rich do not have a problem in their uh, taps in their homes the poor do the third thing i'd i'd like to say is both amrut and uh, smart cities are essentially going to be bottom up so the the point that the prime minister made was the city should decide where it should go not the real estate or the builder lobby i think is going to be met you know i was reading the guidelines and there is an actual weightage on how many citizens have participated in consultations especially the disadvantaged the poor so i think amrut is essentially living up to the president's address in june 2014 that by 2022 every house will have a tap with a sewerage connection with 24/7 uh, water uh, uh, power and water so i think we are at least uh, gunning for the the basic uh, minimum level okay so by 2022 not just housing for all but basic services for all amir razili coming to you do you see uh, where do you see the smart city mission and the urban renewal mission overlapping so i think there is a very good uh, overlap between the two because if you look at the smart city missions themselves you're talking about Uh, various aspects but also talking about how to leverage technology to improve service delivery and if you look at the other amrut mission for example then if you look at water which is the first priority that the government has talked about their technology can essentially be leveraged to to reduce non revenue water for example right if we can leverage sensors and some analytics based on that to say there are leakages in pipes or something else is happening where the water is not reaching the appropriate destination then people can be alerted and some decisions can be taken quickly and then the, the problem can be avoided that way right and similarly same techniques can be leveraged for other uses whether it is uh, wastewater whether it is sewerage and stuff like that 
Mr. Keshav Varma, the Amrut Mission is talking about some 11 reforms uh, for urban renewal. They're talking about e-governance and funding and bylaws and levying user charges. But from your experience, what does it really take to effect change on ground? Well, first thing is that it is very smart to focus on basic services and to use technology to accelerate that process. So there is a great amount of integration here. What makes a difference at the lower level? One is civic awareness. A sense of participation in the progress that is taking place, a feeling of pride and connectivity with what is going on. So when uh, meters are being put and you have to become more accountable for paying your taxes, people should do it in an enthusiastic manner not get cynic, uh, you know, cynical about it. So again, going back to Ahmedabad, one of the things that we found in Ahmedabad was the kind of joy and pride the residents of Ahmedabad felt in paying up the areas of taxes, in paying up and in, you know, in committing themselves to innovations, to new systems, which were actually and how did you incentivize that? How did you encourage that? One is through a great amount of visibility. You have to create visible impact in a city so that people start feeling that things are changing. Results on ground. Yeah. Second is having a great focus on financial resources because most <clears throat> of the cities are today bankrupt. So you got to focus on financial resources, both in terms of systems, as well as in, uh, you know, in developing areas and information. So, you know, all this e-governance and everything comes true. Once you start doing that, you start showing when you have the money, we had 300 crores. We could do 300 crore uh, rupees of road, 340 kilometers road, change the bulbs, change, created a new boulevard and everything else people started feeling that their city is undergoing a change and that they were willing to you know make it go even further okay. so i think it is very much a, a symptom of positioning your city in a particular manner to develop a brand image for your city and then to make sure through communication that people feel excited about it Okay. Uh, Arindam, coming to you, Keshav spoke about information and e-governance, one point that we haven't addressed. So uh, there are these new concepts that everybody is talking about, the internet of everything, big data, and industry experts are saying that cities generate such a huge amount of data, and if you can harness that data to make speedy, informed decisions, you have an efficiently smart efficiently run smart city. Uh, are we also going to look at some of these solutions for India? I, I think we definitely need to, you know, because uh, these have not been uh, fleshed out as of now as part of the program. But going forward, we will definitely need to look into these. I'll give you a very simple example. You know, let's say we have a water distribution uh, network in one of the cities. And uh, you essentially need three components of technology there. One is, of course, the basic connectivity in terms of water pipelines then you need to have network level instrumentation which could be pressure flow meters for tracking the water distribution flows and identifying if there are leakages etc the third uh, tier of uh, technology which you need is the back end ict solution which takes inputs and data from these network level pressure flow meters and then correlates that with let's say customer complaints received through a call center and helps you identify whether there are any leakages, the need for proactive maintenance, etc. Now, the beauty of the system is this, that the third tier of ICT solution, which is at the back end, that need not be done city by city. That can sit on the cloud. It can be one single application. And urban local bodies can be made to subscribe to the solution on a transaction charge basis. In the process, you overcome your technical capacity constraints <laughs> at the level of individual urban local bodies. You also move from the need to uh, invest a large amount upfront to a transaction fee-based model. 
and you know you are effectively creating a scalable solution which many cities can leverage. Before I close this segment, Jagan, very quickly from you, 65 cities under UPS, JNN, URM, and now over 4,000 towns and cities under uh, the Amrut mission. Uh, is it going to be a challenging task for the government? Oh, absolutely. It's an it's a enormous challenge. But I think the vision that has been spelt out is that we need to achieve things within a certain reasonable uh, period of time. Uh, we need to deliver the goods to uh, all urban citizens. And we need to do it through an instrumental logic so that we actually use whatever means are at our disposal, uh, whether they are uh, capacity building or they are uh, technology or better improved financial management. Uh, and most importantly, integrated and evidence-based uh, planning which converges all these efforts. We've got to use all of this, the power of all of this, to deliver results and outcomes within a very reasonable period of time, 2019, 2022. These targets are uh, very, very ambitious targets and it requires a very large and concerted effort and I think that needs to be underlined. Okay, very tight deadlines indeed for India. So that covers what the Smart Cities mission and Amrut aim to achieve for the new India. After this short break, we'll discuss the potential of the Housing for All mission and the challenges that still remain unaddressed.